for continuation of strength of materials which is still under stress we are going to take another example and go through it for proper understanding so in this example we are going to use that the ball crank is in equilibrium so what do you know that is in equilibrium with the force acting in rod one and two so we have rod one and what rod two here so this is rod one and this is f2 right we have f2 here now the the bell crank it's supported by 10 millimeters by a 10 millimeter diameter pin at b so with b the diameter is 10 millimeters and that acts as a single shear yes the thickness of the ball or of the bell crank is what five millimeters assuming that the and a is um 65 so here they gave that a here is 65 millimeters now b here is 150 millimeters now they give us that our f1 which is is 1001 1001 newton and our theta is giving us what 50 degrees now for question number one they are asking us to find the shear stress in pin B. So for the free body diagram, it will enable you to what? find the reaction forces and also find out how you can solve it. So for us to find um, the shear stress in pin B, what you must do always is that you are supposed to find the reaction forces. So using at equilibrium, using the, um, the free body diagram shown, calculate the reaction forces that acts on the what? A bell crank so in this case acting on the bell crank what you must do now is that um you must first find the moment right so first let's start with um creating a moment as where there's a lot of forces and we can see that b there's a lot of forces at b we have um bx and by here because of um that uh pin there so that you are going to create um so sum of moment at b should be equal to zero that's what at equilibrium so then in that case we have a force here and a force here so here this will be f what x and this will be this moving here will be what f y so for us to create a moment at b let's start creating a moment at b let's look at f y you creating a moment at b moving to b the distance will be 65 millimeters to b so therefore we are going to have which is moving in the world the clockwise direction i'm taking my anti-clockwise as positive so depending on what you are taking my anti-clockwise is positive so i'm moving in the clockwise direction in that case what i'll have is i'm going to have negative bracket open 1100 newton force then close the bracket sign the angle is 50 degrees you close it then um the distance is 65 millimeters then let's let's see plus let's go to plus with f2 right with f2 we are moving in what is moving in one direction which is what the x axis and we are moving it to what b so we move in the what the clockwise anti-clockwise direction that's why it's positive so and f2 was given to us um we don't have f2 so we are finding f2 so f2 then since in the x direction it's going to be um f2 that has been resolved already f2 then times the distance what is the distance note that this f2 has been resolved already as f2 right in this case this has been resolved because it's in one direction that is on the x axis right so it has been always resolved already which is f2 so you're going to have f2 then which is going to give you um f2 times the distance which is 150 millimeters then um, we we create that to zero and when we create that to zero we are finding f2 when you do it correctly we know that our f2 is going to give us 365.148 newton so then we move on to the reaction forces which is bx and by so then with that we are going to write that the sum of forces at x should be equal to zero at equilibrium and when we resolve that we know that we are going to have our bs is in a positive direction bx which is positive then minus right we have another resolve force at the top here 
um for this result for status fx but it's moving in the negative direction as you can see it's moving in the negative direction so we're going to have 1001 newton then we are going to have force the angle which is 50 degrees right yes then plus let's move on to now we have our f2 right now after getting our f2 we know that this f2 added to since it's in the positive x direction you're going to just multiply add it to what six five point what one four eight newton right so and you equate it to what zero that is for our bx and our therefore our bx we are going to get that our bx is going to give us 341.919 newton then we go to our what our f of y right note that f2 is one component force so now finding the f of y the sum of forces is in the uh the sum of forces in the f y direction should be equal to zero at equilibrium so in that case you move on to your free body diagram which is going to help you to generate it right so your free body diagram you can know that we have um our fy here which is positive fy we have our positive fy here and then we have another um as you have our positive what we have our by which is our by is our by right in this case our by is moving up the arrow is pointing up here yes for the free body diagram i'm changing for easy solving so you can change your arrow depending on yourself like it depends on your free body diagram you can change the arrow to go inside or come outside but at the end you should arrive at the same answer but in that case our by become positive so we have our by here becoming positive this is our by becoming positive and then we have our what fy also becoming what positive so when you bring that sum of forces together and equate it to zero we, will, we are going to get that our by plus our f1 which is 1001 newton then sine 50 degrees should be equal to zero and in that case when we resolve it you are going to get our by we are going to get our by to be negative 842.649 newton i told you that depending on the what the direction you took right if i took the direction which is going down here and i saw my by should be positive but if i take it to go to the negative side it'll be what negative um the positive so it depends on the area taken now after finding the result the reaction forces what you need to do is that you find the resultant force so the resultant force which is therefore going to be b bar is going to give you a square root of right you know you are going to take the force which is um three four one that is the resultant of the bx nine one nine newton squared squared right yes don't let this confuse you it's the same thing i'm just newton squared and um plus negative 842.649 newton squared so at the end your resultant force for the b you're going to have a resultant force which is going to give you a resultant force of 909 point three hundred and seventy six three hundred and point three seven six newton please note you can leave your answer in three decimal please right now let's move on to the question so the first question is asking us to find the shear stress in pin b the shear stress in pin b so the shear stress in pin b where is pin b so in pin b this is pin b right and we are supposed to find the shear stress in pin b and then they gave us the um they gave us a diameter right they gave us a diameter because i i think they gave us a diameter for the diameter of um acting on it supported at what so the diameter is 10 what millimeters in diameter right so therefore after finding the resultant force at b we are going to find the shear stress at b so for a it's very simple so for a what to do now is that shear stress there's a shear stress at pin b what you're going to do is that b is going to give you the resultant force you had for b b resultant over the area in that case 
the resultant force that we had for a um for b was what um 909.376 newton and for the area we are going to get pi on four and the diameter given to us was what 10 so 10 millimeters squared and when you do that correctly we are going to get that we are going to be, give you 11.58 megapascal now for b for b they are asking us to um find the shear stress that is for b the bearing stress in the ball uh, in the bell crank at b so you are finding the what the bearing what find the bearing stress in the bell crank at b so for the bearing stress bear that the bearing stress at b which is the bearing stress you're going to have that will be the resultant force all over the thickness times the diameter so you are going to have the thickness the diameter times the thickness right times the thickness of the what bell crank so in this case when you are finding it you are going to have that you are going to have 909.376 all over the thick the diameter was 10 millimeters times the thickness what was the thickness the thickness given to us was what five millimeters it's very simple and at the end your answer is going to give you 18.19 megapascal so for us to find the bearing stress right 